got a few definitions, and some of this will be familiar to you, but some of it won't. Some of it should be a little bit of a review. But we're putting it all together. We're looking at x and y values, whether or not it creates a function. So all of this together is related. So just be patient, and, and by the time we get to the second page, it's going to make sense. It's going to click, all right? So first, let's look at some definitions. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. X and Y. For example, negative 2 and 3, 5 and negative 8, 5 and 2, Zero. They're just a random set of ordered pairs. Sometimes they're off of one of your lines. Sometimes they're just random pairs of numbers that are graphed. All right, the domain. The domain is all the x values. So if we were to look at the list above, I would list it like this. The domain consists of negative 2, 5, 5 again, and 1. The range, all the y values. So from our example above, the range is 3, negative 8, 2, and 0. Any questions so far? All right, function has a long definition, and it takes a couple of examples to fully understand what it means to be a function. All right, so a relation is a function if each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. And you're going to hear this short little phrase quite often. For every x, there's one y. And what this also means is the x or the domain can't repeat. So if I give you a set of ordered pairs, if the domain does not repeat, then it's a function. But in this particular case, in the domain we have 5. 5 is paired with negative 8, and 5 is paired with 2. And because 5 is paired with 2 y values, 
this example right here is not a function because the 5 is repeating in the domain. The 5 is being paired with negative 8 and the 5 is being paired with 2. So that makes it not a function. All right, so examples. I'm going to draw what we call a mapping. When you have a mapping, you see items in the domain with a circle or an oval around them and a circle or oval around the range. And then there's arrows indicating what values from the domain are being paired up with the values from the range. So this is a picture of what a mapping looks like right here. Okay, this is a picture of a mapping. So the first one wouldn't be a function? Because the six repeats for all the numbers. But the six, is it in the domain or the range? Range. So oh, it is so it is one. Because the domain is not repeating, it is a function. The range can repeat. Okay. So if you were to look at this in terms of ordered pairs, we have negative 3 and negative 6. Negative 2 and negative 6. Negative 1 and negative 6. Oh, I get it. It just can't be negative 2, negative 6, negative 2, negative 3. Exactly. Exactly. So this is two ways. You can use a mapping to show your ordered pairs or to show, I'm sorry, your relation. Use the mapping to show the relation, or you can use ordered pairs to show the relation. Both of these are fine. But we have to show the relation. You will be asked to draw a mapping today. Um, you'll also be asked to list ordered pairs. So you okay. need to know that you can translate it from this to this, or this to this. Okay. So by looking at the items that are in, the elements that are in the mapping and the ordered pairs, is this a function? Yes. Yeah. yes, because for every x, there's one y. All right, on number two. Negative three is going with negative six. Negative two is paired with negative one. Negative one is paired with zero. Zero is paired with three, and one is paired with 15. Yeah. So it is one. So do we have items in the domain repeating? No. So is it a function? No. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right, number three. Here's your items from the domain, items from the range. So this wouldn't. No. Well, let's look at the, first let's look at the mapping. I'm going to draw the mapping out for you of what's supposed to be paired with what. Negative 3 is paired with negative 6. 2 is paired with negative 1. Negative 1 is paired with 0. 0 is paired with 3. 1 is paired with 15. And we're going to pair 1 with 3. So it still wouldn't be 1 because, wait, no, it would be. No, no. no, no it, would, it would be because uh, the domain is repeating only the range. No, the, no, the domain, domain is still repeating. The domain is repeating. If we were to list these ordered pairs, we'd have, for example, 0 and 3. We'd have 1 and 3, and we'd have 1 and 15. It's okay that the range repeats. Not okay for it to have the uh, domain repeating because that makes it not a function. Sarah? Why would you connect the one with the three? The because it's the mapping that I chose to put together. Um, you'll either be given the mapping, you won't be drawing out the arrows, or you'll be given the ordered pairs and you'll have to draw the mapping. You'll be given one or the other. Okay. Sarah was just putting it together for you. All right, so. Identify the domain and range for the given set of points. So for number four, we need to just come up with a simple list of what's in the domain. 
So wouldn't it be negative 1, 0, 2, 4, and 5? Yes. And the range? Um, 2, and negative 1, four, and negative one zero. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Is each relation a function? Yes. So for A, remember that for a function to exist, for every x, there's one y. So if you want, you can list out the domain and the range and look at the data just to be clear. Or you can just eyeball it and say yes or no. So what's in the domain? Zero, zero, zero one, 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 two. one, and two, which means that it's not. Correct. And what's in the range? Um, one, two, three, four. So this is not a function because? Because the domain repeats itself. Because the domain repeats itself. Because this x has two y's. This x has two and it has three. So it's not a function. What about b? No. Or yes it is. What's in our domain? Zero, one, two, and three. And what's in our range? One, two, 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 two and four. And is it okay that we have two twos in the range? Yes. Yes. So this is a function. What about C? Yes. Why? Yeah. Because no, Yep. All right, number two, identify the domain and range for the given set of points. So, what's in my domain? Negative 13, 10, 12, 24, and 52. What's in my range? 12, 13, 14, negative 11, and 10. So it would still be, no, yes, it would. This would be a function. Yeah. All right. Another way to determine if your set of data points is a function is by looking at what we call the vertical line test. So, what does it mean to be vertical? Up and down. Up and down. All right, so, given the graph of a relation, if you can draw a vertical line that crosses the graph in more than one place, then the relation is not a function. So, if you were to take this data and graph it, we would have a picture like these down here. And we could try to determine whether or not it passes the vertical line test. So this is what we do for a vertical line test. Vertical line test is you're drawing vertical lines through your picture. You want to hit your graph in only one place as you draw vertical lines. So this right here is an example of a function because it only hits the graph in one place. Also, oh, like the line and the and the lines, the the curved line and the lines that you draw, they don't like the circles going to. When you draw the line through, it only connects one. Right. When we hit this, when we draw lines to this one, what do you notice? It hits twice. It hits twice at the top and the bottom. So this fails the vertical line test. So this is not a function. Now, <laughs> if we plotted points, um, one and two, and one and three. Both of them. 
So does it pass the vertical line test? No. It fails the vertical line test. So this is why when your x or your domain is the same, that it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. Okay? So looking at just the data or looking at a graph, you can determine whether or not it passes the vertical line test. All right. C. Draw your vertical lines. Wait, would would yes. that be? Yes. Wait, I thought it would be no because it hit like it hit. Uh, it doesn't hit it twice below one line. If it was going horizontally, it would. But it's not. Oh. If it was going horizontally, yeah, then it wouldn't be. But since it's going vertical, it is. Right. Yes. Oh, you're talking about the squiggle. Is that what you yeah. mean? You are correct. Or the other one. Right. All right, so this is a function. a function. Now, what about D? No. No, it fails because it hits it twice. See, if it went the other way, it would okay. Exactly. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, function notation. Traditionally, functions are referred to by the function f of x, but f need not be the only letter used in function names. <coughs> Quite often, what we do, when we write functions, we write y equals 2x plus 3. But it can also be written as f of x equals 2x plus 3. So, I like y. yeah, we're so used to y. Here you've got a couple more letters. So, the statements y equals x squared and f of x equals x squared are basically the same. You may even see statements such as f of x equals y, which equals x squared. So, a function is represented by f of x equals 2x plus 5. Find f of 3. So would you just fill in the x with 3? You would. So to find f of 3, replace the x value with 3. So f of 3 equals 2 times 3 plus 5, which gives you 11. So it would eventually equal f3 equals 6 plus 8 minus 11. E equals 11. Equals 6 plus 5, which equals 11. Yes. So that's what we're going to do. So you wouldn't multiply it? 2 and 3? 2 times 3 yeah. plus 5, which is 6 plus 5. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, because it was... Never mind. Okay. All right, so a function is represented by f of x equals... 1x minus 3. Find f of 2. So you take so this 2 and substitute it in where the x is. So it'll be f 2 minus 3. f of 2 equals 2 minus 3. 1 times 2 minus 3. Yep. Yes. Is 2 minus 3, which is. Oh, so you. So then do you just take out the x? Negative 1. Okay, negative so one. you replace like all the x's with that number. Yes, you do. So we can also write it with g instead of the f. So g of negative 2 looks like this. This should be equals negative 3x. So negative 3, replace the x with negative 2. So 6. Yes. Wait, so it turned out Why don't you just make this so simple? Simpler. This is so much extra work for getting the same answer. Wait, so would the negative 2 get canceled out anywhere, or would it still yeah, be Yeah, with the negative, negative. G of negative 2 equals negative 3 times negative 2, which is 6. So G of negative 2 equals 6. Oh, okay. so you're not so really doing anything with the G of negative 2. You're stuff like what writing this means it, is, and then you fill it in. Right. By, oh, this, okay. by this equation, the point that you would get is negative 2 and 6. Okay. That's what that means. All right, a function is represented by h of x, which equals negative 2x plus 2. Find h of 0. So we have h of 0 equals negative 2 times 0 plus 2, which is zero. 2. 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Just 2, because it's 0. Zero. Zero. Here we go. All right, we good? Oh, my God, let's go.